Welcome to our review on cooking with waves. Now we can actually cook using a couple of different waves and we can look at these two in turn. First one is infrared radiation. Now what we learned earlier in our P1 topic is that the warmer an object is the more infrared it's going to emit. So if an object absorbs infrared the surface of it's going to get hotter. Now what we find is when we're looking at cooking food using infrared then that infrared is going to be emitted from the heating element and be absorbed by the food itself. Now this is only going to be absorbed by the surface of the food and that means it's going to heat up the surface and therefore cook it. What we find if we look at the actual appliances that use this, so ovens and toasters for example, then they've got a shiny surface on the bottom to reflect that infrared back towards the food to cook it that bit faster. The second type of electromagnetic wave we can use to cook our food then are microwaves. And microwaves use microwaves. Nice logical name there for us. Now if we compare microwaves and infrared, then microwaves have a longer wavelength. The way that our microwaves actually work then is that they're produced from one point inside the actual microwave oven and they will be able to penetrate about one centimetre into the food. So they're able to penetrate further into the food than the infrared is. The microwaves are then absorbed by fat and water inside the food and that makes it heat up. And again, inside our microwave, you'll notice there are shiny surfaces that are going to reflect any of those microwaves so that all of the parts of the food are going to be cooked. Microwaves can actually be quite dangerous to humans and cause burns because our body tissue will absorb those microwaves just like the food that we're cooking inside them. So if we just had a plain glass door, the microwaves from inside would be able to transfer out and then affect us. So to avoid this, what we've actually got on the inside of our door is a metal mesh and that prevents the microwaves passing out of the glass and plastic and therefore prevents them from affecting us. If we think a little bit more about cooking the food then, obviously the two methods we've looked at are going to be cooking the outer parts of the food. Infrared only is absorbed by the very surface of the food and our microwaves are absorbed by the top centimetre of the food. So obviously this isn't going to cook all the way through if that's all that happens. So what actually happens is that as those electromagnetic waves are being transferred to the food, then they're picking up energy. So once those particles on the outer parts have gained energy, then they will transfer the energy to other particles within the food, either by conduction or convection, depending on what the food actually is. So if we think about our microwaves, then the fat and water molecules inside that top centimetre in our food are going to be absorbing the, ele the actual electromagnetic radiation and therefore they will gain kinetic energy. They're then obviously going to pass that energy from that top centimetre all the way through the food by conduction or convection. In our conventional ovens, because the infrared is absorbed only by the very surface particles, then they will pick up the kinetic energy and then transfer it all the way through the food using conduction or convection. But because they're only on the very surface compared to the top centimetre from microwaves, then cooking through the conventional oven method is slower than cooking via microwaves. Last thing we need to consider then is that the energy that the electromagnetic magnetic wave has actually depends upon its frequency. So the higher the frequency, the more energy it has and therefore the more dangerous it is as well.